acoustics. Did you know that bad acoustics can have a huge effect on your health? Should acoustics be a starting point for your design? Just a few questions where you'll get answers to during this webinar. I'm Pascal van Dort, working at Rockform as Global Acoustics Ambassador. And in this role, I talk a lot with architects, interior designers, building owners about sound, noise and acoustics and how it can and will affect their designs. If you have any questions during this webinar, no problem. Just send them to the email address that you will see at the end of this webinar. I will go through three chapters. The first is about acoustics. The second and third, you will see reference projects, projects where it went terribly wrong when it comes to acoustics, but also projects with the solutions that we provide to have optimized acoustics. So sound, because sound is the base of acoustics. And sound is affecting us in many, many ways. It's controlling the way we feel, the way we act, the way we think. It's even controlling our health. So what is sound actually? When I ask this question in front of a group of architects or interior designers, I get a lot of answers like sound waves, vibrations. It's all true, but actually this is sound. Math. When I was doing a study on building acoustics, the first few lessons was all about math with a lot of logarithmic calculations. But also this is sound, perception. What I hear doesn't necessarily need to be the same what you hear. And then you talk about psychoacoustics. Speed. Do you know what is the speed of sound? Do you remember from high school? Well, it all depends through which matter the sound waves are transmitted. In air, it's 340 meters per second, but underwater, for example, 1.5 kilometers per second. That's why, for example, whales can communicate on a distance of two to 300 kilometers easily. When you have sound waves hitting a structure or a material, a surface, the sound waves can be diffused, absorbed, transmitted and reflected. And we will go through them all one by one. A very good example of sound absorption, a sponge. Mostly sound absorbing material are fluffy, soft, with a lot of air inside, so all the sound waves can lose its energy. For example, this restaurant in Barcelona, La Dolcia. The fruit you see hanging is textile, filled with a soft, fluffy material, so there will be enough sound absorption in this restaurant. This is an example of diffusion. Mostly it's a hard, smooth material with different heights and different angles so that the sound waves will be reflected in different ways. For example, this restaurant in Melbourne, Australia, owned by master chef George Columbaris. He has seven restaurants in Melbourne, and this is one of them, Restaurant Gazi. 3,971 flower pots hanging upside down. Flower pots made out of clay, so a little bit sound absorption, but the diffusion in this restaurant when it comes to acoustics is very good. Question is, did they know or did they do this because of aesthetical reasons? When it comes to reflections, Mr. Antonisius Kircher, he found out that the angle of incidence is also the angle of reflection of a sound wave. So actually, sort of, you can give directions to sound waves. And when it comes to that, this is a good example of diffusion, absorption, but also reflection. The Royal Albert Hall in London, built in 1871. And back then, it had one of the worst acoustics when it comes to concert halls. It had a reverberation time of 3.5 seconds. For a concert hall, is way too long. That's why they added in 1968 the dishes that you see there hanging to sort of lower the ceiling, but also to have a more diffused field. The reverberation time then was from 3.5 to 3 seconds. So it was already better, but still not optimized for a concert hall. So that's why in 1996, acoustical consultant Peutz made a scale model of the Royal Albert Hall. And the outcome of the calculations was that they needed more of these dishes to have a more diffused field and also more sound absorption. And because of that, 
the reverberation time now in the Royal Albert Hall is 2.6 seconds, which is, they told me, the best for music of Tchaikovsky. So when you have the section view of the Royal Albert Hall, now you can see why it went wrong when it comes to reflection and diffusion. You see that because of the shape of the roof, the sound waves sort of are reflected to the end of the hall. And of course, that's not what you want. So when they added these dishes, they sort of lowered the ceiling, also the volume of the room. And now you can see how that affects the sound waves. Now you see, because of that, it has a more diffuse field when it comes to acoustics and the reflections of the sound waves. So now we know a little bit about sound. But what about acoustics? What is acoustics, actually? To have a little bit more understanding about this subject, we go back in time. Back to ancient Greece. 350 BC, to be exact. Because back then, this theater was built. The Epidaurus Theater. The person who is performing in the center of the circle that you see on the ground can be as clearly heard on the first row as the person who is sitting 60 meters higher. How come? Because back then they didn't have a microphone. In 2007, there were two Belgium students from the University of Georgia, and they found out that the rock being used, it absorbs the lower frequencies. And in this case, the lower frequencies is the chattering of the people in the theater and the rushing of the leaves. Question, of course, is, did the Greek knew? I think so. Because this is the word acousticos, the Greek word acousticos. And if you translate it, it means literally an influence of hearing. When you have acousticos and you look it up in the dictionary, it has two meanings. One is about sound waves, and the other one is about how these sound waves react in a room or a building. So now we know a little bit about acoustics, but why is it so important? I think this picture of a little girl says it all. But Robert Koch said this in 1905. So actually what he says here is, forget about cholera, forget about the plague. In the future, noise will be plague number one. He was quite close because according to the World Health Organization, it's now plague number two. Number one is air pollution. So when you have different kinds of sound levels, here you see a few, and of course some you will recognize. The 88 decibels, that is me snoring. My wife complains a lot about that. The 106 decibels, that is my daughter, Emilia. When she was one year old, I was changing her diaper. And she was crying. So I did a sound measurement. It was 106 decibels. When she saw me coming with the equipment to measure the sound level, she was even starting to cry louder. Also, the 102 decibel that you see, Maybe some of you know this tennis player, Maria Sharapova. When she was at the tennis court, all the time when she hit the ball, it was like, Ugh! and that was 102 decibel measured at the tennis court. And of course, when you have a Formula One, for some, this is a heavenly sound. But for me, it is noise. When I was at a Formula One race in Belgium, I had earplugs. But still, this doesn't say that much when you get hearing damage. Actually, it all depends on how long you are exposed to these noise levels. And now it's getting a little bit more interesting because now you see that, for example, when you have a restaurant, you go there to have a nice meal, a nice dinner. You can have two hours without getting hearing damage. But the people working there, eight hours, 10 hours, most likely with these noise levels, they will get hearing damage. And then there is the annoyance factor. Already from 70 decibels, research showed that people are annoyed because of these noise levels. So when we talk about our health, hearing damage 
it can be it what is called tinnitus a constant beep in your ear with a high pitched sound it is like a yeah beep, very high pitched sound and you hear this 24 hours a day also when you go to bed in the evening your eyes you can close but your ears are open 24 hours a day some people go literally nuts because of this and then there is something else above our kidneys there's an organ that produces adrenaline noradrenaline and cortisol and cortisol is what is called a stress hormone so actually we get a little bit stressed now when these hormones reach the part in our brain which is called the hippocampus it affects our memory our taste and our immune system bad acoustics in hospital increases blood pressure and heart rate you go to a hospital to lower your blood pressure to lower your heart rate so this is not healthy when it comes to offices i think we can all relate to this almost everyone is negatively influenced by noise at their office and even because of that we are less productive even until 66 percent when it comes to gastronomy ramon freisa a two Michelin star chef cook from Madrid, Spain. He has a restaurant and in this two Michelin star restaurant, he got a lot of compliments about the food, but a lot of complaints about the noise levels. He was so fed up with this that he had his restaurant uh, changed. He optimized the acoustics. And now the people are not only giving compliments about the food, but compliments about the total experience when they go out to have a nice meal. Ramon Freisa also started a platform, which is called Comer Sin Ruido, literally meaning eating without noise. And when it comes to education, a teacher in front of a classroom can tell a story, but if the children don't hear it all for 100%, it's not good for the education of the children, for the education of the students. And because of the background noise that is too high, the teacher has to raise his or her voice to be understood perfectly. And because of that, they can get hearing damage. So then where does it go wrong? In this chapter, you will see examples of reference projects where they were not thinking about acoustics, or maybe they did, but they did it in a wrong way. This is an office, an office with hardly any sound absorption, so the sound waves cannot lose its energy. Noise levels most likely were quite high in this office. And I hear you thinking, yeah, Pascal, but this is like 100 years ago. True. I will show you an example of an office nowadays. Exactly the same. No sound absorption whatsoever, so the acoustics, I don't think they are very good here. Maybe that's why the people look so happy. It can get worse. This is what they call the glass building in Hong Kong. And I'm a little bit ashamed because this is a Dutch architect agency, MVRDV, and they try to use as much as glass as possible in this office. And of course, glass doesn't absorb any sound. So the noise levels, I think they are very high if people are talking here with each other, or on the phone. You would say that the new built head office of Fender, a company who produces guitars, they would know about acoustics. But if you look at this office, an open plan office, I think the acoustics are not that optimized because you see a lot of hard, smooth materials, not that much sound absorption. And even if you want to have a meeting at the table that you see, I think the people working there at the desk will be annoyed by the voices, by the speech, by the meeting that they will be at the table. Maybe they did it on purpose, because when you have music played, then you can have a little bit higher reverberation time than for the purpose of an office. Try to have a meeting in this bunker. It's all concrete. Maybe if you are with the two of you, you can still have a conversation. But if you have more people there, I think it's impossible to have a good meeting. 
Something which you see a lot nowadays, transformation of buildings. To have an old building and transform it to another use. In this example, you see a church which is transformed to an office. But the function of a church, when it comes to acoustics, of course, it's totally different than an office. So you need to take that in account. This is a hospital in Manila, the Philippines. I was there myself. The concrete ceiling that you see here, of course, doesn't absorb any sound. You see a lot of small babies, and maybe it's good to know that the hearing of babies is 100 times more sensitive than us as adults. Okay, this looks very nice. Here you can have a meal and enjoy, well, let's say it's very Instagrammable. But when it comes to acoustics, the shape of the room, well, it's very negatively influencing the reflections of the sound waves. And also the materials used, they don't absorb any sound. So what will happen here is called the Lombard effect. People that are talking in this restaurant, they try to get above each other's voice to have themselves understand. This is a core store of Starbucks. When I was at Starbucks in New York a few years ago, I ordered a double espresso. And the man behind the counter, he said, sorry. I said, what do you mean, sorry? What's your name, sir? I said, Pascal. What? Pascal. Okay. So two minutes later, I get my double espresso. Denzel, your double espresso is ready. Do I look like a Denzel to you? No. Because of the noise levels that were too high in this uh, Starbucks restaurant, they couldn't clearly hear my name. And what about this classroom? When it comes to sharing information, the acoustics should be optimized, and it's not. Only concrete ceiling, hard surfaces, it doesn't reflect any sound waves, or sorry, it reflects a lot of sound waves, but it doesn't absorb sound waves. So the acoustics are horrible here. So now you saw some bad examples when it comes to acoustics. And I will show you now projects where the optimized acoustics are present. For example, this school in Poznan, in Poland. A really nice example how they played with the design and also to optimize the acoustics when it comes to educational purposes. When it comes to education and you have a classroom which is quite deep like this, it's not only about sound absorption, also about reflection. Because can you absorb? Too much? Yes. When you have a classroom like eight, nine meters or longer, you need a reflector. So what you see here in the middle, the higher part of the ceiling, is a ceiling with a lower sound absorption. So with reflection. Around, there is a ceiling panel with a very high sound absorption. And in this case, you have optimized acoustics because the speech is transmitted via the reflector to the end of this classroom. This is an office in the Netherlands where they really were paying attention to acoustics. What we call the four C's, collaboration, communication, contemplation. It all depends on what you are doing inside an office. And here you can go to the region in this office, a zone where you can do what you want to do. If you want to concentrate, you can concentrate. If you want to have a meeting with a person, you can, you go into a meeting room. A nice example of an office where they want to have this urban look. So that's why they have these islands, these rafts. And I have to say they were very much paying attention to design because the uh, lighting that you see here, very nicely designed. And when it comes to acoustics, they are quite good. Also here, if you want to have this urban look, this open plenum, it's possible when it comes to designing an office with good acoustics. Here you see also the cabinets in between of the desks. Very good for blocking the sound also. The sound waves that go above the cabinets, they will be absorbed by the simple lay-in ceiling that you see designed as an island. A very nice office building recently opened in Trondheim in Norway, where they used a lot of baffles. It was the starting point of the design. And in this atrium, where you see the baffles hanging, 
not only to make sure that the reflections from left to right are absorbed, it's also a design element. Very nicely done. Donald's, they found out if people stay longer in their restaurants, they order another Sunday ice cream, they order another milkshake. And when do they stay longer? When the acoustics are acceptable, when the acoustics are good, because then you don't have that much noise levels. Here you see a good example. A very high sound absorbing ceiling. You also see diffusion. You see materials with a perforation, which also is good for sound absorption and diffusion. If you want to play with the design and an acoustical ceiling, you can. This is a very good example where they did this Mercure Hotel in France. The acoustics, of course, very important when you have a reception desk or a, a cafeteria, cafe, as you see here, where you also need to have privacy. This is a dental practice. And the design elements here hanging, the uh, islands, the rafts, they are designed like our teeth. The edges that you see are a little bit round, like our teeth. It was the starting point of the design of this dental practice. First, I don't have to tell you how important acoustics are in a cinema. The ceiling that you see here, of course, it's a sound absorbing ceiling, but above there is a layer of stone wool and together with the acoustical ceiling absorbs the lower frequencies. The lower frequencies, of course, that you have in movies. The wall panels that you see, they also absorb sound to absorb the horizontal reflections. And also the wall panels, they are impact resistant. Swimming pool is in the Netherlands. It's a Olympic swimming pool. And when it comes to the Dutch Olympic Committee, they have very high demands when it comes to reverberation times in their facilities. So that's why the solution here were baffles. Baffles because they wanted to see the structure of the roof. And in total, 8,000 colored baffle, baffles were installed to improve the acoustics. And this is one of our latest projects, which we're very proud of that Rockfon is being used here. It's in Helsinki, Finland. This building is the central library of Helsinki, and it's called UDI. This is the top floor. The ceiling that you see is a very high sound absorbing ceiling, and it is like a, yeah, let's say like a big cloud above your head. Some people even call this book heaven. These are our five senses. When I talk with architects and interior designers, I often ask them, can we design a roof, uh, a room or a, a building for our five senses? When I had a talk with an architect and interior designer, they said, well, we even take in account our sixth sense. And that was quite interesting. The sixth sense, yes, the way we feel inside a room or inside a building. And that brings me the last slide I have. It's a quote from Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel. And acoustics is a very big part of that. Well, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, just reach out to me or my colleagues. You see my email address here. So once again, thank you for your attention. I hope I will meet you another time. Meanwhile, take care.